are autonomous robotic organisms from the planet Cybertron. Welcome back, Autobots, to Decepticons, and everything in between to another Transformers Theory. Today's is going to cover Cybertron misconceptions. And keep in mind that this video will only be covering the Bayverse rendition of Cybertron, and not the Cybertron from the rebooted continuity. But before we jump into that, a quick word from our sponsor, Manscaped. Now, with Christmas coming right around the corner, an excellent present for any man would be the Perfect Package 4.0 by Manscaped which is the first all-in-one men's grooming kit that has you covered from head to toe. In this package you will find the Lawnmower 4.0, a waterproof cordless trimmer that is built with advanced skin-safe technology, which helps reduce nicks and cuts from your most sensitive areas. It even has a cool LED light which is really helpful for nighttime grooming. There's also the Crop Preserver, a ball deodorant, and the Crop Reviver, a ball toner spray. Now Manscaped is no longer for just below the waist grooming fellas, in addition to products for your face, they now have you covered head to toe with their new and improved Shears 2.0 Luxury 6 Piece Stainless Steel Nail Kit. Every guy out there needs to add Manscaped to their wish list this season. And if you got a special man in your life that's been extra good this year, make sure you get him the Perfect Package 4.0 by Manscaped. And for a limited time you also get two free gifts the Shed Travel Bag, and the Manscaped Anti-Shafting Boxer Briefs. So what are you waiting for? Go to manscaped.com and use my promo code TRANS20 to get 20% off plus free international shipping plus two free gifts. Now Cybertron is the home world of the Cybertronians, and has appeared in three out of the five Bay films, those being Transformers 2007, Transformers Dark of the Moon, and Transformers The Last Night with it looking drastically different in each installment, especially in size and appearance. The design we got in Dark of the Moon appears to be the definitive design, since the same hexagonal structure is shown again in The Last Night. The reason why I say definitive is because in the 07 film, we did not see any of these hexagons whatsoever, with the terrain of Cybertron appearing to be a rocky wasteland. It even has a lava pool in the middle. So now let's try to flesh out all these inconsistencies. Well, to start off, let's figure out why we don't see these hexagons over Megatron. And that's because not every part of Cybertron is still intact. You see, in the majority of Transformers continuities, Cybertron has been torn apart by war, with chunks of the planet missing and or being destroyed. The Bayverse incarnation is no exception to this. In A Dark of the Moon, we can clearly see that in some areas of Cybertron, these hexagons are destroyed or flat out missing. One even comes down in this shot of the movie. If we also take a look at Megatron's general location, we can infer that something really, really bad happened here, since we can see all these watchtowers overseeing a lava pool. In addition, the atmosphere is a toxic green, the ground is all rocky, and we can see a bunch of dead robots hanging off one of the towers, with them all appearing to be corroded. The only explanation I can think of that caused this destruction is some type of nuclear and or chemical weapon. This can explain why the atmosphere in this portion of Cybertron is green, and why the ground looks completely different here compared to the rest of Cybertron. And to further back the chemical weapon theory up, chemical weapons do exist in the Bayverse. A prime example of this would be Sentinel's Rust Cannon, which was able to rust any Transformer that it came in contact with. So a weapon that would be able to corrode the bodies that we see here, and make the terrain look this hellish would not be that far-fetched. So with all that said, this can explain why the 07 rendition of Cybertron looks so different compared to the rest of the planet. Since this portion of Cybertron was set in some sort of wasteland, and based upon the watchtowers overseeing the lava pool, this area could possibly be Kaon. So now with 07 Cybertron squared off, let's move on to the elephant in the room, that being the last night's rendition of Cybertron. And here many things have been changed. First off, for some reason Cybertron has vegetation on it, which was not shown in any of the previous films. And second, Cybertron is way smaller than it was in Dark of the Moon. In that movie, we did not even get to see the whole planet next to Earth but the fraction that we did see was massive in comparison. While in The Last Night, Cybertron is slightly bigger than the moon, and when it's next to Earth, it gets completely dwarfed by it. 
So how did this happen? Well, the answer to this all lies within one of the many creators of Cybertron. Now, before you comment down below that the AllSpark was the one to create Cybertron, you have to keep in mind that this plot point was later reckoned into the creators being the ones to do it in Age of Extinction. Thousands of planets were cyberformed with seeds. They turned your organic life into our elemental metals. Our creators destroyed your world to make us. Now, in this clip, we learned that the creators cyberformed thousands of planets with organic life to harvest Transformium, which would later be used to create the Cybertronian race. But it's never stated if that metal was used to make Cybertron itself. But if you take into account that thousands of planets were cyberformed, that would be more than enough Transformium to make a single planet especially around the size of Cybertron. And if you take a look at Cybertron itself, the majority of Cybertron is hollow with it being made up of intersecting hexagonal plates. So it's safe to say that the creators would have more than enough Transformium to make Cybertron. But bringing their creations to life along with the planet itself would be an entirely different task. That would require a special artifact. That of course being the AllSpark. We know that the AllSpark played a hand in creating part of the Cybertronian race because the majority of Transformers have symbols on them that match the symbols on the AllSpark. They knew it was alien because of the matching hieroglyphics on the cube as well as in B1. To further prove this point, Megatron in Revenge of the Fallen states that the AllSpark was essential to keeping the Cybertronian race alive. The AllSpark is destroyed and without it, our race will perish. And Optimus in the 07 film states, With the AllSpark gone, we cannot return life to our planet. So with that said, we can conclude that the creators used the AllSpark to bring Cybertron and its inhabitants to life. But now let's move back on to the point of one of the creators being responsible for the way Cybertron looks in The Last Night. And that creator would be Quintessa. And if you don't believe her to be a creator, I have done two dedicated videos trying my best to prove this point. But in summary, we know that she is likely a creator, since she has in-depth knowledge on how to create, reformat, and heal Transformers. For example, when Prime first confronted Quintessa, he was still battle damaged from his fight with Lockdown, evident because he still has the stab marking in his chest. But in a later scene with Quintessa, Prime is all fixed concluding Quintessa to be the only reason why Prime was fixed. To further push this point, she was able to reformat Galvatron back into Megatron, evident by the red mark on his face, which is the same marking she gave Optimus. She also was able to create the Guardian Knights that could combine into Dragonstorm, along with the Infernicons that could combine into Infernicus. But the real nail in the coffin is that in the last night, she was able to control the planet of Cybertron itself. So if that does not prove it to you, I do not know what will. So now with her being proven to likely be a creator, why in the world would she change Cybertron's size? Well, if you remember in Dark of the Moon, after the pillar was destroyed, Cybertron collapsed in on itself, leaving only fractions of the planet still intact. To restore Cybertron, Quintessa would have to resort to Frankensteining all the remaining pieces that she had left together. That is why when you look at Cybertron's surface, the majority of it does not line up, since she had to resort to smashing pieces together to fix the planet. Another interesting detail I noticed is that the hexagonal plates in The Last Night seem to be a lot smaller. For example, in Dark of the Moon, they are these giant platforms that troops of soldiers could walk on. But in The Last Night, they seem to be significantly smaller when Hot Rod and Bumblebee are walking past one. And if we take a look at the scene where Hound is helping the soldiers, there is no way any regular sized Cybertronian could walk on that platform. This is seen again in the scene where Prime is fighting the Infernicons. And that platform is just way too small. The only explanation I could think of is that due to the lack of parts, Quintessa had to downsize Cybertron in order to recreate it. Another thing that's different about Cybertron is all these cables holding the planet together. This is something that was never a part of Cybertron before the events of The Last Night. And there's no official explanation on what purpose they serve. 
But if we take into account that Quintessa had to Frankenstein the planet together, these cables were clearly used to keep Cybertron together. Since when Quintessa starts the energy transfer, she is able to pull the planet back together. Another reason why I think these cables are here is to turn Cybertron into a weapon. As we saw in the film, Cybertron was able to obliterate the moon by splitting apart and crashing into its surface. I think this was a warm-up around orchestrated by Quintessa to test Cybertron's capabilities, with its end goal of destroying the Earth. Once Cybertron smashed into the Earth, we learned that it caused the core to cool down. And we know that Unicron is the core of Earth, since in Optimus's ending speech, he says that there's a dangerous secret buried deep inside the Earth. So if the core cools, this would mean that Unicron would be weakened, which proves that the reason why these cables are here is not just a way to keep Cybertron together, but to also be used as a weapon to aid in Unicron's demise. Now, the last thing I would like to cover is why Cybertron had vegetation on it. Now, yet again, this is something that was never explained. Even when Optimus Crash lands on Cybertron, he doesn't know what to make of it. My world. What has happened to my world? Even in some shots of Cybertron, it appears to have some snow on it, which makes no sense whatsoever. The real-world reason for why this vegetation exists is so the human actors could better interact with the environment? In the previous movie, Cybertron, it was built mostly from hexagonal pieces. This one, because of where we would need to go with our actors, we had to have some sort of soil or dirt surface that we haven't seen in the previous film. As for the in-universe answer, the only thing I can think of is that Quintessa wanted to reshape Cybertron into her own image, wanting to transform it into a techno-organic planet. And to back this idea up, we saw a lot of Beast Wars concept art spawn from The Last Night's production. So maybe if Rise of Unicron was not cancelled, we may have seen this new techno-organic Cybertron come to life with Beast Wars characters. And just like that, that was Cybertron Misconceptions. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you have not already, check out the Fixing Transformers playlist for some more awesome theories. But before I go, I want to say thank you to all my Patreons and channel members for supporting the channel. Thanks to you guys, Trans Theories is where it is today, so thank you. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, consider dropping a like rating because it does help the channel a lot. With that said, keep on theorizing.